Welcome back to another video everybody. Today we are going to be painting the engine bay of the drift truck. This is a very important step on the build because we paint the engine bay and everything goes in for its final assembly. Real quick before this video gets any further, I want to show you guys the Gingium air fresheners. As I was talking about in the last video, they did officially arrive. So here they are. We have Four, they come in a pack of four. There's the drift truck one, Rally Miata, Molly, and of course, the Adventure Bus. If you want a set of these air fresheners, I'll have a link in the description down below. There's only like 30 left, I wanna say. If you purchase one, thank you so much. It really helps support the build. Also, go check out the gaming channel. Link in the description. All we have to do is paint everything in here, but there's a lot of work we have to do to get it ready for paint because we have to remove all the wiring harness, which all of that, all this, we have to remove all the ugly parts that we want to paint. So some brake lines, the, uh, the windshield wiper motor. We have to go ahead and remove the suspension, the coilovers, the hub, and the upper control arm so we can paint those individually. Clean it all so there's no grease anywhere. We have to sand it all. We have to wire brush every single weld, which there is a lot. Then we have to go ahead, paint the underside, paint the wheel wells, then paint in here, and we're doing a base coat, or we're doing a primer, a base coat, and a clear coat. Quite a lot to be done. Oh, we also have to cut out room for the radiator because we want to do that before we paint anything, so we don't have to paint, or so we don't have to cut painted metal. Besides that, I don't really know what else to say. There's kind of a lot of time consuming work. Hopefully I can get this done by Monday so I can get this video out to you guys. Let's get going. I'm gonna start off by trying to remove this wiring harness. This is the engine bay without any of the wiring. Already looks so much better without all that stuff up there. Now just imagine it all one color and all nice and clean. So good. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the uh, hood latch and then cut the area for the radiator. And then we can lift it up, take the suspension off, and start sanding. We have to remove the hood latch because it won't fit with the radiator. So we'll do some sort of arrow pen, some cool nice looking hood pins. What would you guys do if I put this much camber on the drift truck? The front suspension of the truck it is removed on both sides. We did that so we have all this room to paint without having to tape off anything. And I needed to weld a couple more things in here. The nice thing about this project, I know it's taken a while, but we have literally touched everything on this truck numerous times. I think I know the ins and outs of B2200s better than I know the ins and outs of Miatas now. If anything breaks on track, it should be pretty easy to fix. I know how to do everything. I know how to do everything quickly. So that's really nice. But I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit more welding and then we can start the, uh, the cleanup process.
So the engine bay is already looking a lot better. There's no dirt anywhere. I spent like literally four hours, no, like three hours, scrubbing this all down. No grease, no dirt. After one, one fender. <laughs> I went ahead and sanded everything, including the metal, like thoroughly, so it's all ready for paint. Cleaning isn't just cleaning the surface that you're gonna paint. You also have to clean the area because you want as dust-free of an environment as you can possibly get. So with that being said, we're gonna detail the, the truck. Well, not really, we're just gonna spray some detailer on it and wipe all the dust off, which I know you're not supposed to do that, but it's already got swirls and we need to get the dust out here. We're also gonna go ahead and uh, sweep up this disaster. She is ready for paint. As you can tell, everything is taped off. Everything that's not taped off is gonna be painted over, including the brake lines. A lot of you guys were questioning why I chose black. I chose black because it's simple, it's clean, it is going to match with any exterior color I do, so I never have to repaint it. Uh, it doesn't get dirty as fast, and the list goes on and on. I really love the white engine bay of the RX-7, but it was a pain to keep clean and the white doesn't really match this. I'm using the same spray can paint that I used for the RX-7. Works really well, it's just rust automotive brand. Now we are actually gonna start with the underside, so like the bottom of the steering rack mount and the inside, the wheel well suspension stuff. That way, if any overspray gets on the inside of the engine bay, it'll all be painted over and it won't, won't matter anyway. So let's get started, shall we? Going to start off with a quick wax and grease remover to make sure that the paint adheres properly. I way underestimated the amount of paint I would need. This is two cans of paint and it's not quite enough, so I'm gonna go to the store, get some more. While I'm painting, I'm sitting in my office editing a game video, cooking myself some pizza. Oh yeah, Mountain Dew. I'm just gonna be doing this for a while because I need to do like, oh yeah, no internet. I need to do like nine layers of paint. Hopefully this pizza is pretty good. The, 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 the bottom of it is pretty raw. Definitely destroyed the top and didn't cook the bottom. Yet another problem. Frick this paint. Usually I, I love Rust-Oleum, but for some reason their automotive primer just sucks. Like no matter how thick I put it on, it just came out dry and textured. The finish is absolute crap. I had this issue when I used this paint on Audrey's car too, and it gets just overspray everywhere. It's just, ah! Like it, it feels like sandpaper in this corner and it just rubs right off. Look at that. Uh, now I have to re-sand everything, but of course I can't sand anything until four hours. I, just, I hate when I use products that just don't work. This thing is just, it ruins anything you try to paint. You have to sand it after you paint it. All right, 
right, well, thankfully with enough sanding, I think I saved it. So let's continue on with the base coat, doing the suspension yet again. That means 15 minutes of editing, paint a layer, 15 minutes of editing, paint a layer, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, until it's done. While the base coat dries before clear coat, I'm gonna go ahead and paint some other things like the windshield motor, the, um, the vacuum crossover tube thing for the brake booster, some other stuff. upload a day late just so I can get a little bit more done in this video. Engine bay is painted. It looks uh, it looks pretty good. It's definitely not amazing. Not as good as the RX-7. There's some fish eyeing over here and some other stuff. It's just that freaking primer kind of screwed everything out. I also kind of forgot the fact that this really awesome glossy black engine bay would make the grill and other black stuff look really bad, but Whatever. But even though I'm uploading a day late on this channel, I went ahead and uploaded a gaming video. Pretty much from now on, there's gonna be a video every single day, whether it's on the gaming channel or on this channel. I'm really working hard on these gaming videos and I'm really, really enjoying it. I'm having a blast. If you wanna go help me out, go over there and subscribe. It only has 20,000 subscribers right now. I feel like it should have more considering there's 300,000 subscribers on this channel. I should be able to get at least a third of you guys over there, right? I'm gonna keep advertising the gaming channel until I get another one of those bad boys for it. I'm gonna go ahead and work on reassembling this engine bay a little bit now. This truck doesn't really have a separate uh, engine and chassis harness. The engine harness had stuff for the chassis, like the wipers and some other stuff. The chassis harness has a lot of stuff for the engine, like the, uh, the airflow meter plug, alternator stuff, and stuff for the transmission, and all this other crap. So I don't need a lot of the stuff in this harness. I don't need any of the engine stuff, but I do need, for instance, I'm pre pretty sure. He needs this. I believe he needs, you know, the power and ground wires. I need the headlights, the blinkers. So I can't like remove this 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 harness entirely. We're gonna have to like modify this harness and do all sorts of stuff. So. I 
another pizza. I learned from my mistakes and it it looks like it's cooking much better, much evener. I wanna get myself a nice crispy crust with that boy. That is what I'm talking about. Now, this is pretty much all I can do until the paint has a couple of days to dry and harden. It's really, really fragile right now, so I don't wanna put the coilovers in, I don't wanna put the hubs back on, I don't wanna put the engine in yet. Wheel wells are undercoated, shock towers are painted, upper control arms are painted, everything there is looking really awesome. The engine bay is obviously, obviously painted. Like I said, the engine bay isn't perfect. But once everything is in here, it should look a lot better. And hey, it's not a show car, all right? I am definitely a little disappointed at how it turned out, but it's better than that red engine bay. Engine's gonna sit right here. It's gonna have the same silver valve covers and intake manifold. You're gonna be able to see the, the transmission, which is painted the same color. Thank you guys so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed. I'm hoping to have the truck all put together uh, by this weekend. Let me know what you guys think about the engine bay. Be nice. But be honest, subscribe if you are new, I would totally appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out, goodbye.